let's talk about education because the Ministry of Education in 2021 introduced a competition of ideas among senior high school, senior high technical schools and TVET institutions across the country to find lasting solutions to problems in their communities for social economic development in the country. Now, it's been three years since that STEM innovation drive was instituted. The question we're asking this morning is what has been achieved so far? We have in the studio spokesperson for the Ministry of Education, Kwesi Kwasing. Thank you for your time here on Newsdex. Hey, thank you, Fosti. It's glad to see you in person. We mostly do Zoom. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, we just take advantage of technology. But this time around, I felt that I needed to come to, I mean, throw more light into the project, particularly mm when we also have some videos to show. Great. Now, we also have Nana Sikamensa. She is Deputy National Coordinator for the Free Senior High School um, Program and Project Lead for STEM Innovation. Nana, Afra, thank you so much for your time here. Thank you for having me. On Newsdex. I I'll come to you shortly, but let me start with Gracie because we've missed him. Okay. Um, what's the update, <laughs> STEM Innovation? How far have we come? Three years. What's the impact so far? Yeah, I think the premise is also equally important. Mm. Because largely, if you look at the global trends in development, mm. you realize that there is a very strong correlation or link between education and socioeconomic transformation. And all over the world that you have seen development or socioeconomic fortunes turn around, obviously the basis or the focus for that development came from education. And I have always followed my boss and even listened to the conversation that he has been making all over. Mm. He makes a case that countries that has even hit the in terms of the, uh, the gross station enrollment ratio being up to 40%, that country develops automatically. Mm. If you cite cases like, for instance, uh, Singapore, 40%, it develops Botswana, 40%, America, 76%, it develops. And of course, if you look at countries like South Korea, around 96% is also developed. But of course, it's not just any other education, but an education that is relevant to the socioeconomic transformation. And so if you look at education, for instance, we are looking at particularly three main key uh, pillars or variables. You are looking at access, you are looking at quality, you are looking at relevance. And so when access meets quality, and quality obviously is the kind of education that you are giving to your people, that is where you will be able to achieve relevance, which translates into the socioeconomic uh, fortune. So our world, I mean, if you ask me, is gradually changing. Mm. If you look at all over the world, I mean, particularly taking the context from the first industrial revolution, the second industrial revolution, the third industrial revolution, where Africa or third world countries do not take advantage of it. We believe that particularly within the fourth industrial revolution, where we are talking about robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, 3D imaging, we as a ministry have to reposition Ghana's education to be able to take advantage of the global trends and make sure that we are able to train students who are not just only readers and writers, but they are critical thinkers, they are assertive, they are problem solvers, and not just ordinary problem solvers, but they are able to identify problems within their local space, use local materials to be able to solve such uh, uh, local problems. So when we talk about the concept of STEM innovation, what essentially we mean is that we are now realigning with the global trends in mm -hmm. terms of our educational landscape. And therefore, we are repositioning education to fit into 21st century, which means that we've introduced STEM. But STEM innovation essentially saying that it's only about STEM being theorizing within the classroom, but STEM putting into practice. So STEM innovation essentially means that you are particularizing ideas to be able to solve problems within particular society or locality. And that's quite interesting for me because to a large extent, the concern we've had from a lot of um, educationists is that our system is more theoretical than practical. Exactly. So I'll come to Nana to tell us more about what you're doing because as coordinator for the free SHS program, you have had the opportunity to engage a lot of young people and their thoughts about merging STEM with innovation. Tell us more about that. All right, thank you for, for having me. You mm. know, looking at uh, the investments we are investing into the free senior high school space, mm. we thought it wise that we will not allow this investment to go waste. So why then don't we bring something practical on the table for students to, I mean, develop problem-solving uh, solutions to the issues that we are facing as a country? Trust me, during our first edition, Rara, a community in Uti region, realized that teachers and nurses were not accepting postings to some deprived communities. And then they decided to bring something practical. You know, they, they, it was something like a rural electrification. 
and then market women nurses who were not accepting postings to those communities were able to get light and it was all solar light so uh our investment shouldn't go waste. We need to challenge these students to bring something practical on board. That is why the STEM innovation came about. So it's simply a competition among high schools for them to identify a problem within their community and then find lasting solutions to them. Let me come to you, Kwesi. Yeah. Identifying problems, that's to a large extent what these children would be doing. Yeah. So tell us more about that. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you look at the whole landscape of the world economy, it's all about identification of problems and then professing solutions to them. Mm. And as you profess solutions to them, I mean, it creates employment in terms of uh, areas of health, in terms of areas of agriculture, is able to really change the narrative and brings about development. That's what we call socioeconomic transformation. Particularly, if you want to look back, for instance, during the first industrial revolution in the year 1769, you realize that there was the invention of the steam engine, obviously to solve a societal problem, to increase mass production. Then you move to the second industrial revolution, which was in the year 1870, where also there was the invention of electricity to also, I mean, support industries and power machines. Of course, then it graduated to also the third industrial revolution in the year 1969, where there was also the invention of computers to also be able to help with mass production. So at every point, if you look at the global dynamics, the trend has always been where there is a problem in terms of uh, if you want to increase productivity in the areas of agriculture, in the areas of health, in the areas of climate change, in the areas of biotechnology, such problems obviously will have to require innovative response and innovative ideas to be able to respond to them. So I gave one video to your producer. If we look at, for instance, recently the conversation that is going on, particularly within our, 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 our health space. I mean, you guys brought it up. Mm. with regards to dialysis and the mm. fact that, I mean, there are even some moments you go, people or patients are unable to pay. You have a school like Obwase Secondary Technica who has invented a solar panel dialysis machine. Mm. So obviously, ultimately you ask yourself that what will even motivate them to do so? First of all, they have to identify a problem within, I mean, that locality or that vicinity. And such a problem is that people are unable to afford dialysis. But of course, you, you, the identification of the problem alone is not enough. You will have to profess solutions to it. And professing solutions to it will mean that you will have to identify resources that you will have to use to be able to respond to such a problem. Of course, there is a component where you may even have to rely on importation to be able to gather or assemble some of the resources. But we make sure that throughout this competition, the whole concept is that you are able to use maximum 90% of the local resources to be able to respond to societal problems. So the machine you see on our screens mm. was designed by Obwase Secondary Technica High, which obviously is a very uh, strong and innovative response to the problem of, uh, I mean, patients who have to uh, get the services of dialysis so in our hospitals. So what happens then, moving forward, once they come up with this innovation, does government fund it so that we can start seeing it in our hospitals so that it is not just at the school level? Yeah, I mean, the question of sustainability is always very fundamental. Mm. Uh, because, yes, uh, initially it was just about just uh, theoretical aspects of education. And I side with my boss, Dr. Osed, when he said that you cannot memorize yourself out of poverty. Mm. So it means that you have to put those memorization into practice and practicalize it to be able to respond to societal problems. And so questions of sustainability here is very important. It is a more reason why as of now we are on platforms like this to also explore, I mean, industry and corporate Ghana and even the entire world to be able to also take up some of these uh, innovative yes. ideas so that, I mean, when it comes to matters of copyright, patenting, they can escalate it into mass production so that it becomes uh, 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 the, the propriety or the property of not only the, the students, but I mean, they can be shared responsibility, but ultimately, which will have a higher benefit on society. Mm. So we are exploring those ideas. Uh, we are in talks with uh, other organizations. Of course, some of the feedbacks uh, uh, have been very great, but I'm sure uh, subsequently we should be able to communicate the, the, the pathway in terms of the continuity. But uh, this is also an opportunity once again to also appeal to corporate Ghana, particularly the, those in, within the industry to also come on board. Because if we look at countries, developed countries, is rather industry who even comes up with such research proposals, particularly looking at the areas that they want to research into to be able to solve problems. Then they pitch it to these students. 
students at the end of the day come out with an innovative response, then they embrace those ideas. So we can also replicate the same. At the, at the moment, we are having institutions like NEP, which is also a government institution, which is also helping. But I mean, if you look at the mandate of NEP vis-a-vis uh, -vis this one, you may also need more hands to be able to also come on to ensure that there is continuity and sustainability. It also raises a bigger question about what we're doing with some of the research, especially in tertiary institutions lying in our shelves. Is this something that government will look at so that we can see our work, our research work on the ground actually working for us? Yeah. Well, well, so like I, like I indicated, mm. we admit mm. that as a, as a society, there is that uh, corporate gap, mm. uh, particularly if you look at research and how those research are utilized for the overall impact on our socioeconomic transformation. And it is something that, I mean, as a country, we have to look on. But particularly with reference to this one, <laughs> ultimately, these are inventions and innovations. Most questions that one will ask before coming on board is the originality of the invention. And I mean, if you look at this, I'm just for the first time hearing that we are witnessing a solar powered mm. uh, uh, dialysis machine. Mm. So, I mean, it's a more reason why we believe that corporate society should also come on board, industry should come on board to be, able, of course, we are also reaching out to some to be able to ensure that we maintain the sustainability and continuity of uh, some of these innovative responses that are coming up. But of course, as a country, largely or broadly, we should once again look at the correlation or the balance between researches and mm. the impact on socioeconomic transformation. Because you cannot just research, identify a problem, prefer solutions to it, and some way, somehow, even when it comes to policy directives and policy directions, mm. they may not necessarily be factored into account. It's something that, as a country, we have to look at that side. Mm. Of I'll thing. come back to you, Chris, but let me go to Nana because. Um, I'm seeking to look at the gap between rural schools and most of them, their science labs, mostly empty. And so if I am competing with a school in the greater Accra region, mostly largely resource, that's a gap. How are you bridging that gap? No, it may interest you to know that mm. when it comes to our competition, mm. it's, uh, we bring all schools on board from category A to category C. Mm. Even last year, our winner, the one who won was from category C school, a school in Ahafo, Ahafo, my community. Mm. Uh, no, it's not a community, it's Ahafo, my senior high technical school. They won. Mm. Looking at the project that they are doing, we are not looking at those that are well resourced before we give them a, a topic for, or a team for them to develop a project on it. It's a general problem. So we don't need those with the big science labs and those, the less endowed schools for them to come on board to compete in the competition. Mm -hmm. Every school is entitled to come on board and then do the competition. So you, you may even ask, why is it that maybe the Wege Hayes and then the Achimotes, why didn't they win, but rather a school in a half a mile won? Mm -hmm. That shows that we want to bring everybody on board. So as we wrap up the conversation, give us details. When is this year's event happening? All right. This year's event is, we are done with the road show. Mm. And then so we are putting our, our materials or our resources together. So the grand finale will be happening at the University of Ghana. We are still working on the venue, which will be announced later by next week. We are looking at 30th to 2nd of, uh, 30th of September to 2nd October. That is where the whole program will start. And we'll be looking forward to that. Kwesi, yes. I can't let you go without getting updates. WAIEC has been on your neck in recent times. They say you owe them money. How much have you paid? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it was really WAIEC. It was, it was the minority in parliament who were acting as <laughs> to for WAIEC. But of course, we who I mean, act as though they were doing it in good faith. Uh -huh. Because ultimately, WAIEC ought to be paid. But I mean, for Sina, mm. what is most important to understand is that if you look at government working with its agencies mm. at every point government will owe its agencies because government do not give money for you to go and work you go and work and later on you come in i mean claim your uh, reimbursement that's how it's always been and we have had that relationship with WAIEC for so long a time just last week we released an amount of 50 million ghana cities to WAIEC. so that is the good news aspect mm. and so this whole but how much are you still owing I am unable to state that off head. Of course, I'll have to verify and confirm to you. Mm. But I mean, admittedly, at every point, we we'll still owe why because they render services, and the services is not, it's not an event, it's a process. You have, I mean, certain examination questions, marking, 
bringing the script. And as of now, <laughs> they are just marking. So mm. certainly we'll still order them because the work has not even terminated fully. Mm. But our resolve is that we, at every point, gives enough um, or makes enough provision for them to be able to do their work. Just like last week when we gave the amount of 15 million. So, I mean, parents should not be alarmed. Mm. We have a very good relationship with WAEC. We have been paying WAEC. And WAEC is in a very good standing and good position to be able to deliver. That's the most important. But their concern is about the delay in disbursement. So that was is not it the case that the Ministry of Education is broke? Oh, I'm not sure that is the case. Mm. Uh, like I indicated earlier, mm. I mean, if, I'm not a procurement expert, but mm. largely how government businesses are run, you, you work before we pay you. Mm. So at every point, there will be some outstanding areas that the government may have to clear. Mm. It does not necessarily mean that government owes and is not willing to pay. Mm. Government takes responsibility that when there are even any outstanding areas, they are willing to pay. And especially, I indicated the same to you, that in the interest of good faith, mm. we even just paid an amount of uh, 50, 50 million, million. CDs, uh, just last week. So, I mean, there is no cause for alarm. We, every parent and everyone should be relaxed. Uh, students are going to get their, their results and they will be in school. Uh, hopefully, even in terms of the WASI, even though uh, mm. we are not very confirmed with the date, maybe around October, we should see students hopefully be in school. So there is no cause for alarm. Parents should be very calm. But for now, what we are pushing is term novation. Yes, term science term and math squeeze has been very fantastic. It's been something that is, has trended. We've really gotten the publicity and attention. But I mean, beyond that, there is also the bit of innovation. Mm. You can theorize it, you can put out there, you can memorize, you can do all the calculations within your head. But we as a people believe that beyond that, we have to put it into practical mm. application. That's what STEM innovation represents. Well, Kwesi Kwarteng, spokesperson for the Education Ministry, has been my guest today. I also had Nana Afras, comments our deputy national coordinator for the free SHS program and project lead for STEM innovation. My